Roles in Postgres. I know it's been a lot of theory so far and we haven't really zoomed in on anything concrete, on any exercises, but again, I promise you this foundation is worth it because the more you understand about all of these concepts, the stronger you are positioned to know what is going on around you and all these areas you may want to dive deeper into as you go along, you may find something that interests you. So when we talk about roles in Postgres, we're talking about security. And when we talk about security, security is vital. So roles are vital to any DBMS, any database management system. Roles are absolutely vital because they determine what is allowed, right? When we set up roles, we're basically setting up the functions to which people are allowed or not allowed to do things. So this is a very, very important part of database management. And it's very hard to get right. As with everything, it's very hard to get right. But rightfully is so because when it comes to roles, when it comes to what's allowed, you have to be very, very careful. You don't want something accidentally going wrong because you gave the wrong rules and permissions. It's a trust-based system. So when we look at roles in Postgres, what a role is, it can be a user or a group. It depends on how the setup is done for that role. So it can be an individual user or it can be a group in which we put multiple users. That's interesting. So any which way you slice it, a role can either be an individual or a group of individuals. Now, when you think of a role as a term, you think of a group of individuals having a role because you think of it being something that someone has, right? You think of it as something you give to someone, a role you give to someone. Well, in Postgres, you can basically make it an individual as well. So it can function as a user. It can be a role that's given to only one user. That's interesting. Another thing to note about roles is that roles have the ability to grant membership to another role. So you can give a role to a role. And when that role is given to someone else, they automatically have both of those roles. So roles have the ability to grant membership to another role as well. It's very interesting. So there's the chain of permissions of which Roles can have roles and then give roles to users. And roles can also grant membership to another role. So they're very versatile. Now, are you confused yet? Because it can become very confusing, but in actuality, it's pretty simple. When you look at roles, roles have attributes and privileges. And attributes are basically the same thing as a privilege. Like attributes define a privilege but there are privileges that aren't attributes as well. Like you can have an attribute that says you're a super user and that could give you the privilege to do whatever you want, but you can give individual privileges to a role that have nothing to do with an attribute, just like super user. Super user is an attribute and it specifies a couple of privileges, but the individual privilege could be read access, write access to everything the ability to create databases. Those are privileges. Now, attributes can define privileges. Privileges are linked to attributes and privileges can be given independently. Let's take a closer look at some of those role attributes. All right, so let's zoom into some of those role attributes. Because when a role is created, it is given certain attributes. The privileges of a role are determined in part by its attributes. It's like I said, when you define a role, there are two different parts to it. There are the attributes and there are the privileges. And some of the attributes of that role can determine some of those privileges. They can say, hey, you can do this and this and this because you have this attribute but privileges can be more granular than that. You can give specific privileges as well on top of what the attributes give. So when we look at certain attributes, certain attributes that can be given to a role 
is for instance create db no create db so you can tell a role whether or not it is allowed to create databases you can give a role the ability to create a role or not create a role you can give a role the attribute to log in or not be able to log in and on top of that you can give a role the ability to be a super user or not be a super user so interestingly enough, what you see here is these attributes that we're defining, super user, no super user, create DB, no create DB, in part, we're telling a role, hey, these are some of the attributes that you can have. And, you know, by giving it the attribute, you're also defining a privilege. You're also saying, hey, you're allowed to create a DB or you're not allowed to create a DB. You're a super user, so you're allowed to do everything or you're not a super user, so you're not allowed to do everything. So attributes that can define privileges. There are a vast array of privileges outside of attributes as well. So when you define a role, there are certain attributes you can give it. And on top of that, you can give it privileges after that are more granular. So common attributes, like we saw, are the login privilege. The ability for a role to log in can be considered the same thing as making a role a database user. There is the attribute of a super user status. A database super user can bypass all permission checks. You basically have the Superman logo on your chest at that point because you have free reign. Then there is the database creation attribute, which is a role must be specifically given the permission to create databases. You don't just get it out of the box. Okay, if you're a super user, good, great for you. Postgres, for instance, the user that we log in with, that's a super user. So it has this by default, this attribute. It is an attribute that must specifically be given to a role. And then there is the attribute of role creation. A role must be explicitly given the permission to create more roles. And then as the last but not least, there is the attribute password. If you give the attribute login, well, then a password is very significant in that case. Now, there are more attributes to be listed here, but these are the most, most common attributes. Now, here we go. Creating a role. Well, here we are creating a role. So we're creating a role called read only and we're giving it login ability and we're encrypting the password. Always encrypt the password. Always encrypt the password. Don't, don't ever not encrypt the password, but you have to specifically pass encrypt it here. And we're giving it the password read only. And why encrypt the password is because it'll be encrypted. Just always encrypt the password. So when you encrypt and store a password and give it with login ability, you can now log in with that role. And so what if we wanted to view the roles that are available to us? Well, at that case, we have the backslash du command. And what that gives us is the ability to see, hey, what is the list of roles and attributes for those roles? And you can see here that we have the read only that has meager attributes. Now, when you create a role, by default, only the creator of the database or super user has access to its objects. That is pretty interesting. When you create a database, only the creator or the super user has access to its objects. That's important to note here. Anyone else needs to be given access to its objects. We've been very lucky that we're a super user, but by default, only the super user or the creator has access to the objects of that database. So that's important to note here when we're talking about roles and permissions. Now let's look at creating a user. 